As Ansu Fati might have a chance here. Difficult angle. Goes for goal. And we score, guys. And of course, it's Ansu Fati who gets the goal on number 10. We've actually scored. Oh, that is a lovely finish shot. That is a hat trick from Ansu Fati. Hat trick from Ansu Fati. We're talking about our number 10, who's 18 years old. It's never a dull day in the life of a Barcelona fan. Last night, they got humiliated by Atletico Madrid. And to make it worse, club legend and former player Luis Suarez ended up scoring against them. He didn't celebrate, which is, you know, respect. But still, man, how embarrassing is all this? I honestly don't think we could have timed this series because this is literally the perfect time to do a Barcelona Caremo. They're truly in the mud in real life. Hopefully, we can bring them back to top-level football in this series. We started off okay -ish in the last episode got hammered by Real Sociedad but against Bilbao there's a bit of hope with our new number 10 Ansu Fati scoring a hat-trick. Last episode was kind of like the pilot where we just set up our team figuring out how we want to play but in this episode we can finally use some of the money. Remember we can only spend 50 million and we can only make one signing in the first window so we've got to be very smart and cautious about how we spend the cash. Not gonna lie guys it's gonna be a bit of a tricky episode figuring out that one signing playing through games as well but I can't wait for it. I'm loving this Barca career mode and hopefully you guys are enjoying it as well. The support's been crazy. Let's keep it up. Let's see you guys smash out 9,500 likes. Why not? Just the random number for this one. I'll get you all an episode tomorrow 100%. So yeah, drop a like on the video. It's free to like the video, by the way. Subscribe as well for daily FIFA 22 career mode content. And let's get on the grind. Starting off the series with our very first press conference is the Barca boss. Some really interesting questions in this one. First one is from Roy about the Youth Academy. How much are you planning to utilize the Youth Academy? Are you going to go all out with three five-star, five-star scouts and build a team around young prospects, perhaps? I kind of want to do that, guys, because I feel in the first season with us limiting transfers, might be smart to get three insanely talented scouts and just have a lot of talents uh, promoted to maybe the Academy and then the first team in the process. So... Scouting is going to be key, which we will begin once we've wrapped up the trans window. Probably in the next episode, we'll try and create our own La Masia. But yup, Youth Academy and, you know, finding scouts is something I want to do. Remember Jacob Andrews from the West Ham save? I want to create more superstars like that. Next up, why aren't you using Yusuf Demir? He's got loads of pace and he's only 17. The season's only begun, guys. Calm down. We've only played a couple of games. Yusuf Demir is certainly a part of my plans. And I'll prove that by settling the buy option on him. That's not going to count as a transfer, so we can do that. And might as well do it now when he's going to be cheap for us. So, yep, Yusuf Demir is going to be a part of the team. I'll probably put him on the bench very soon. And he's going to give tough competition to Usman Dembele. That's the plan I've got with him. Next up, sign Pau Torres from Villarreal as your centre-back. He's got a high potential and will become the best defender in your squad. Swap any transfer-listed player if he costs more than 50 million. Initially, when I read this, I knew Pau Torres is going to be worth maybe about 60, 70 million. And we can't afford that. We are not making a signing more than 50 million. But then, if we can sneak in a player like, let's say, Coutinho, Martin Braithwaite. Of course, we sold Braithwaite. But let's just say a player that we don't really need and we're willing to let go. Umtiti, for example. I'm down. I'm down to make that signing happen. So we'll have to see what the situation is. Pau Torres just seems like the perfect signing and I think he'll fit the way we want to play with this Barca team. So we'll probably go and make a signing or an attempt to sign him at least. Ansu Fati ends up winning player of the episode. Hat-trick hero in his first episode of the series wearing that number 10, scoring the kind of hat-trick he did. It was superb to watch. Telling you all, man, that's the first of many hat-tricks we're going to see from Ansu Fati. What a player. Already going up in his overall. He's going to be huge for us. Absolutely massive. We just spoke about Yusuf Demir, guys. 72 rated right now. 18 years old. He's somehow on a loan deal from an Austrian club. Worth about 5.5 million. What happens if we go to approach to buy and try and settle this? I think we'll need to put in a transfer offer. I don't mind getting this done. We're not going to count it towards the one signing. Because in real life, Barca have already agreed a clause on Yusuf Demir. He's going to be a permanent player for them. We're going to offer 6 million, which I think is fair. 
Maybe they'll ask for a bit more, let's see. Nope, they aren't. Six million works for them. Yusuf Demir on a permanent deal for that. We'll take it. All right, we just need to get the contract negotiation sorted. He's going to be back up for Usman Dembele for the first couple of seasons. Absolutely worth giving him that contract and making him a permanent player for the club. All right, so I'm going to be offering him 30,000 per week, which I think is very fair, and about 300,000 as the signing bonus. Since we do have so much money, I don't mind paying decent sized contracts to good players. He still wants a bit more appearance bonus. Nah, nah, nah. We're not accepting any appearance bonus. We don't do that round here. A bit more in the wages works for me. And there you go. Yusuf Demir has been signed in a permanent deal. He's not on loan anymore. Very, very smart signing, I feel, in terms of the future of the club. Signed him permanently and I think we need to hop and, and put a development plan on him. It's got to be inverted winger. Need to get that finishing up, that sprint speed up as well. Dribbling goes up, weak foot. Just the perfect plan for a player like him. And would you look at that? Yusuf Demir is happy that we've settled the buy clause on him and we've completed the signing. Very smart to make this happen. We'll be expecting more from him, that's for sure. And now, guys, we're going to make a move in and try and sign one player that we are allowed to sign in this window. And I'm feeling Pau Torres. We've sold Longley. We're looking to sell Umtiti. Pau Torres might just be the perfect left-footed centre-back to have great stats all round. He's fairly quick as well, strong. Good reactions, composure, good in the air. You can't go wrong with a play like this. Helped uh, Villarreal win the Europa League last season. I want to make this happen, boys. But, 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 the transfer fee might just be a barrier for us. He's valued at 56, but this could go upwards of 70 million. The only way we can pay enough money to sign Pau Torres is by including a player in the deal. And I might just do that. Maybe someone like Coutinho or Umtiti, if they're willing to take them, might just be the play. To, you know, make that one signing, even though he's above 50 million or so. Let's do this, boys. Pau Torres, I want him to be a Barca player. I feel he'll just fit perfectly. All right, guys, here we go. Negotiations begin with Villarreal. I'm going to start off by putting in Felipe Coutinho in the transfer offer. I'm not a big fan of Coutinho. He doesn't fit the style of play I want. We're going to submit an offer as well of about 20 million just to see what they say. We're offering Coutinho and 20 wow this was bad we'll need to put up with a serious offer because they don't want coutinho nor do they want the 20 million a bit embarrassing that we're gonna have to try again soon but time is running out guys if we if we mess up transfers like this we'll have nowhere to go we're gonna sim until the next week ahead and i think by then uh, it won't be enough i think pau torres might be an afterthought guys because i'm not sure if we'll be able to put in another offer that's how difficult it is signing a center back guys with a limited budget and unsure of what to offer through swap deals so huh, a bit of a problem on our end let's see if we can make that offer next week just in case we're unable to complete the Pau Torres signing I've got a couple of other players shortlisted Bastoni and Jules Conde Conde would be incredible but the reason I didn't go for him earlier is because I just feel we don't have enough money to sign a player as good as him he is worth about 58 million to be fair very similar to what Pau Torres is worth so you know what Maybe we might be able to pull it off, but I want to wait until next week to see if it's even possible to put in an offer again for Power Torres. If so, we might try one more shot at making this work. Otherwise, we'll have to look elsewhere. In other news, guys, season goals have been announced for the upcoming season, and some of them objectives are a lot of fun. Three of them decided by you guys through the comment section. I appreciate all the suggestions. Of course, one objective I've decided that's around Ansu Fati, the new 10. Score 20 goals this season with him. We strip off him from his number 10 jersey if we fail that objective. But he's off to a good start with 3 in 20. La Masia, this is a fun objective which we'll get to work in the next episode. Produce to 83 plus minimum potential players through the youth academy. So the players we get through the academy need to have their lower band of potential at 83 or more so it's a bit of a challenge that but i'm ready for it that's why we might need the three scouts that we're trying to get five star five star moving on dutch connection score assist 35 goals this season with dutch players de jong and memphis the pie are going to be key to completing that and if we fail that objective guys randomly release a dutch player from the squad imagine asking city to decide whether we need to release de jong or memphis Depay. That'd be painful, but already we're on four courtesy of Memphis Depay. 
Puig is the future. Grow Ricky Puig to an 81 rated player. For long enough, Puig has been ignored by Barca managers. We're not going to do that. And if we do that, he won't be 81 rated. And then we'll, have be, we'll basically be forced to sell him. Don't want that to happen. So some fun objectives for the upcoming season. Some interesting forfeits. Let's see how we fare. Just want to show you guys the players we've got on the transfer list. Neto. Coutinho and Pereira, Umtiti as well. These are a few players we can use for swap deals. I'm kind of hoping, let's say we try and go for Kunde or someone, that we can put in one of these players and get a good deal for us. That's the dream and let's see if we can pull it off. But first, we've got La Liga to focus on us. We've got our first game of the episode and it's a pretty tricky one. Playing Hetafe at home is not going to be easy. They're third in La Liga. They've won both their games so far, whereas we got hammered in our first game and we did well in our second. Let's hope for a good performance. Let's put the transfer stuff aside for one game and get the job done against Atafe. By the way, a lot of people were asking me, how did you get such a big difference from the first game of the episode and the last one and the second game? It's simply because I changed up my tactics. I went to press after possession loss with 60-70 width and depth. Then in the attack, guys, I'm using balanced for build up play and direct passing for chance creation. On FIFA, unfortunately, with possession, you just keep the ball aimlessly. We don't want that. We want to be a bit direct with the pace we've got up top. And so far, so good. We've certainly made some interesting changes to the lineup for this game against Hetafe. A few squad rotations. Yusuf Demir playing his first game in the series. You guys wanted to see him in action? There you go. He is on the pitch. We've got Balde making his first start of the save. I'm telling you, man, we don't need to sign a backup left back. If we can train Balde to be OP for us, I'm sure he will. Eric Garcia starts as well. Araujo at the back. That's our team. Hetafe are very annoying to play against, but I feel we've got enough quality to see this one through. Barca Hetafe, first game of the episode. Let's get our second win of the series before we hop right back to more transfer stuff. Ansu Fati scored three goals in his last La Liga game. Three fantastic goals, by the way. And let's see if we can follow that up. We're playing at the camp now for this, I think. We're playing at home against Hetafe. We need to win this, boys. We need to get our second win of the season. Don't want to be dropping more points early on. As you would have noticed, Yusuf Demir, you guys spoke about him and we're giving him his first appearance of the season. He's wearing number 11, by the way, so that's a bit mad. Balde is getting a chance at left back. And yeah, that's how he starts off. That pass was horrendous. Hopefully, he'll, you know, just not get nervous in this game because that looked like a bit of a nervy moment for him. Ah, spaces have opened up. Where is Balde defending? Vitolo inside. Bang! Hetafe make it 1-0. Where was Balde in this attack? I just couldn't find him. Shocking defending from Barcelona. It reminds me of our game against Real Sociedad where we were just trash. I don't know what's happening, but at the camp now, we've been horrendous this season. First goal has been conceded. Balde was nowhere to be found. Is it too early to play him in La Liga? Might be, guys. Might be. I'm not too sure. That was horrendous defending, as we concede. Ah, oh, another chance for them. Ter Stegen this time makes a good save. FIFA 22 keepers are so OP, yet we've managed to concede, I think, four, seven goals. Maybe seven. Yeah, I think it was seven. Yeah, pretty sure. Seven goals already this season in three games. What on earth is our defending, man? I swear we are desperate for a centre-back soon, as Demir might be able to... Huh, I thought maybe we could pick out Depay, but nope. Yusuf Demir looking for Serginho Dest. Back for Demir. Good pass out wide for Pedri. Oh, that is an intelligent pass for Balde. Pedri gets it back again. What can he do? Looks for Sergio Busquets. That's a good pass for De Jong. Heads it down for Depay. Pedri. Ansu Fati. Has he kept himself on? No, he hasn't. That was good play from Barca. A bit of tiki-taka, but at the end, we kind of messed up finding Fati there. I just feel like we're out of position so often when we're defending and it's really frustrating to be in this situation. We've managed to get players back now, but they've still got a chance here. Araujo is, has a big responsibility, but they've switched sides and now Balde puts a challenge and they still have it. Vitola with space to maybe shoot. They've still got the chance here. This passing is frustrating to deal with, basically impossible. What are we doing at the camp new guys? What are we doing? Hetafe make it 2-0. They celebrate with their away fans as well. Crazy scenes. As we're getting embarrassed in La Liga right now. This is like real life. Like, this is like real life. It's, it's pathetic. We've got to improve. Florentino scoring against us. Oh, oh my god. That touch from Trezeguet was class. Ter Stegen made his body big there and did the job. Good save there from him. 
Here we go with Balde. Finally, we're seeing him do what he does best, which is attack. And that he's pretty good at. Finds Pedri. Now Ansu Fati. This is more like it. Still Fati, but I've got to go backwards. There's just no options available. Ansu looking for Busquets. What can we do with Sergio Busquets? Serginio Dest. Yusuf Demir. Oh, that was a good challenge from Hetafe. This first half, we've been tragic. No two ways about it. Good pass for Memphis, if he can get past one, but do heavy on the dribble there. And that's going to be the first half done. Embarrassing. Going to make some changes for the second half because this is not done. Okay, so Memphis is, is has been just trash. Like, no two ways about it. And I just forgot to put Dembele on the bench as well. I'm such an idiot. Oh, we're going to bring on Aguero, but I'm going to sub off Demir and we'll have... Memphis Depay on the right side. He's versatile. He can play that role. Aguero up top. That's what we're going to do. And apart from that, I don't know what else to do. I forgot to also put um, Jordi Alba on the bench. I'm just a moron, guys. That's the best way to put it. Huh. We need to salvage something from this game. Oh, they've got another chance here. Destegen has closed the gap down, but it's 3-0 Hetafe. I don't know what's happening. I really don't know what's happening. We can see goals so easily this is just embarrassing at this point genuinely embarrassing boys 3-0 down and i have no answer i have genuinely no answer it's gonna be a long season this series is gonna be a grind let me just tell you that we somehow managed to beat bilbao away 5-2 where we saw a bit of promising signs but after that we've just fallen apart good pass ansu balde does well looks for sergio aguero He's missed that. I can't believe it. Sergio Aguero. That is, the fan there literally has the same reaction as me. How is Sergio Aguero missed that? Wow. Oh my God, Aguero. That is unbelievable. Balde did so well to create that chance. And Aguero, that, that sums up how our game has gone for us. That really sums everything up. Incredible that Aguero has managed to miss that. Pedri now, chance, shoots and scores. Pedri gets his first this season. We get one goal back and he's collecting the ball and going all the way back to the halfway line. We're back in the game, I suppose. Had to be Pedri out of nowhere just creating that chance. Aguero's going to get the assist, but it was all about Pedri. Edge of the box, bang. Solid, solid finish. We've got about 20-odd minutes left. A miracle will be needed to get something out of this, but I'm happy we at least scored. Oh my god, they've broken through. This is embarrassing. We're conceding goals like there's no tomorrow. Our defense is just getting destroyed game after game after game. There's nothing we can do about it, man. We need to make that defender signing ASAP after this game. Literally the first thing we do because if this happens and we're playing Bayern Munich very soon, we're going to get like double-digit scoreline at this point. That's how bad the situation is with Barca. I think this is as embarrassing as it gets. We've now conceded eight goals in our last two games of the Camp Nou. Just unacceptable. Simply unacceptable. We need to find something to fix the situation. Bless the lords, guys, because we get an offer for Sam Willem Titi. Don't care about him. We need to get rid of him. Whatever the offer is, I'm ac accepting it. Let's hope he leaves. Important news with Alfonso Maldonado, because development plan has come in for him, and we can now convert him to a centre forward, which I feel it's more of his natural position. Look at that. Up to a 66 overall, being converted to a centre forward. You know what? Alfonso Maldonado, what's his height? What's his height like? If we figured out his height, 5'9", I'm kind of tempted to make him like a striker for us. A striker or a winger, what would suit him better? Five star skills. Yeah, he is born to be a winger, guys. He is born to be a winger. I reckon from center forward, we should be converting him to like maybe right wing or something. Now nah, he's right footed, isn't he? Maybe a left winger would be smarter, but we've got Ansu Fati already there. Let me know what we should do with Alfonso Maldonado. For now, we'll keep him center forward then and add him onto the loan list because I think loaning him out is the smart play. We're on transfer deadline day, guys, and we're yet to make our signing. Um, Umtiti, I think, has made the move to, of course, uh, Leicester, which is great. The only thing that's left right now is us sorting out that centre-back signing, and we need to be fast. Great news, guys. We can put in another offer for Pau Torres, and this time I gotta be smart, and I gotta make the right offer. We're gonna still offer Coutinho in the deal, because he is, I, I feel, surplus to our requirements, but this time... I'm going to go with 30 million as my transfer fee. 30 million plus Felipe Coutinho. Remember, we cannot go above 50 million. Hopefully, they'll be willing to accept Coutinho. They will. 
but they want 62.9 million come on let's propose 40 million as our counter we can go up to 50 million by the way 40 million counter offer come on unai emery please accept it 62.9 are you kidding me is it so difficult let's counter with 47 another offer it's a good one guys 47 plus felipe coutinho please work with me unai come on 62.9 non-negotiable i'm i'm just pain okay let's add um sell on clause let's make it 20 percent. all right let's make it 20 percent, and let's go maximum we can 50 million that's the limit this is it final chance or any hope of signing pau torres is this offer 50 million plus felipe coutinho and let's go oh my god we're using the maximum we're allowed to use offering felipe coutinho in the process who's going to be joining villarreal and we might be able to pull this off pau torres we finally might have a decent center back to partner up with araujo let's go still got to get the contract negotiation sorted we cannot mess this up so he's going to be an important player in the team he's willing to accept that absolutely perfect contract length i reckon four years is 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 gg i reckon four years is pretty good no release clause as well but he wants a 169 million release clause we're not going to work with that are we we're going to reject it no release clause on him these are his wage demands i think ea have fixed wage demands on fifa 22 because look at the upgrade he's asking in his wages that's good to see guys good to see appearance bonus is getting out of there no we don't do that around here we don't do that we're offering him a good signing bonus healthy wages he's willing to accept that and we've sorted out the Pau Torres signing we were allowed one transfer this window we made it count we had to go all the way to the limit 50 million is what we spent for him and of course Felipe Coutinho is going the other way will the transfer go through is the real question because Coutinho has got to negotiate with them or do we just directly get him do we just directly get him guys we do perfect we'll put PK on the bench but yeah the signing is complete we've now got Pau Torres as a Barcelona player top class signing love the pace on him brilliant look at that boys things you do love to see you do freaking love to see what a signing what a freaking signing that is deadline day remaining i'm just gonna get through this and see if i can sell a few more players loan out a few more players and all that sort of stuff apart from that we we're done with our business we could only make that one signing and that we've done oh we do get a loan offer for alfonso maldonado which is amazing to see gonna delegate this one a one-year loan deal sounds about right for the youngster let's show if he can move to bournemouth oh my a transfer offer for sergi roberto honestly i would accept this if we were allowed to sign a right back but we can't in this window so i'm gonna reject this boys because i need to have a bit of depth in that right back position and serginio dest offers that but i need another right back as well we need two right backs for the season i don't mean Geza can play that but i don't want to sell roberto now maybe in the next window we'll accept an offer for sergio roberto and bring in a better right back but for now i want to keep him and a bit of good news guys we've managed to loan out maldonado one of the most talented prospects we've got we'll see him next season when hopefully he'll grow way more in his overall and with that transfer window shut the first window wasn't all that exciting it was all about bringing that one player strengthening that one position defense is what we've decided and let's hope we can work well with this squad that we've got there are so many weaknesses here but we got to just work through it guys that's the challenge of this Barca career mode I never said it was going to be easy I told y'all this is going to be the most difficult Barca career mode we've ever done and it's shaping up like that taking two L's big L's in our first three La Liga games but I'm up for this challenge man let's let's do it together I can't believe this but we're 14th in La Liga this is yeah we're actually 14th in la liga with just three points a win would take us into the top half of the table that's how bad it's been the start for us real madrid flying three games three wins oh my god anyways we're now playing sevilla away from home another massive massive away game which we cannot afford to lose especially after what we did against hetafe there needs to be a good showing here Sergio Busquets has been a bit of a fraud so far guys and I'm just not enjoying him he's just not getting the job done for me and I'm thinking let's try De Jong in that pivot role Puig and Pedri above him Fati Depay Dembele up top Dembele back in the lineup for this one and let's see how this works Jordi Alba is going to be captaining the team by the way Pau Torres making his La Liga debut against Sevilla not La Liga debut but Barcelona debut as I, as I should say along with Araujo 
I want these two to be our starting two center backs. And let's hope it works, boys. That's our team. Barca Sevilla. We need to get something out of this. In fact, a win is what we desperately need. Wow, the Ramon Sanchez Pijuan looks absolutely beautiful on next gen. What a stadium this is to play at. The T4s and all are ready. Sevilla fans are ready for this game, boys. They absolutely are. Let's do this. For some reason, away from home, I just feel like the team is so much more confident. I don't know why. And that's showing already here. Ricky Puig going out wide for Serginio Dest. Ball put into the box. Of course, Pedri's not going to be winning headers. But early on itself, we're applying pressure, which is unheard of so far, at least, because... We've just been really bad in the first 10 minutes or so of the game. So, yeah, good to see. We need to keep this up. Ricky Puig sees Usman Dembele here. Back inside for Ricky Puig. That's lovely for Jordi Alba to control, which he brings down well. Frankie de Jong playing as that pivot. Looking for Pedri. Back for de Jong. I just feel our midfield is a lot more agile in this game, which is what we need as we keep the ball again. De Jong looking for Ricky Puig. I'm taking one from distance. How oh, well defended. That's a good ball into the box, but that's incredible defending from Pau Torres. Conceding early on, we need to just avoid stuff like that. And that's where a signing like Pau Torres can help you. Solid, solid defending from him to block that. It's Pedri now driving it forward. We need that. As he looks for Ansu Fati. Memphis Depay. What can he do? Oh, he messes up, but we still have it with Ansu here. Opening up a bit of space. Oh, nothing could be done from there. Oh, Ricky Pui just had a big game so far. Pedri now. Oh, that's a bad pass. I saw Ansu clear there. Oh, Ricky Puig. By the way, he's had such a big game, guys. Look at his movement there. Like, honestly, Ricky Puig has been driving the team forward on multiple occasions. Maybe he might be one of the players that's going to be huge for us in this series. As Alba gets it, cut back to Pedri, but he couldn't convert that chance into a shot even. Ah, oh, can't afford to concede. Cannot afford to concede. Ball into the box. Pau Torres stops that. Ocampos was offside anyways, but the difference I'm noticing with Pau Torres there... Because he's got very good technique. And he's quick as Araujo makes a big mistake. And we're going to have to recover from this. Big responsibility for Pau Torres. We've been opened up completely there. But I think he was offside anyways. And Stegen made a good save. My God, Araujo. Concentration's needed. Kipuic driving it forward. Looking for Memphis Depay. What a pass that is. Memphis goes for goal. It's straight at the keeper. What a chance. And what a ball that was. From, of course, Ricky Puig. Man Dembele. Looking to bring it inside, going for goal, and that was a close one. That was a very close one. Halftime, positives from this game, we haven't conceded. Negatives from this game, we haven't scored either. Need to improve that in the second half and maybe get on the score sheet. Oh, Serginho Dest has won that. Lovely stuff from him. Stops it. Cleverly done to find Usman Dembele. Memphis Depay, oh, he's put it in. Let's go, guys. We get the opener. And it's Memphis Depay who's managed to sneak that one in. Lovely finish right there from the Dutchman. I don't know how he's managed to pull that one off because there wasn't much space. But he's managed to just pass that in. Cleverly done from Serginho Dest to find Dembele. And then it was just classic Barca passing football to open up the Sevilla defense. And there was literally no space there. I don't know how Depay squeezed that in. Fair play on the finish. Memphis scores yet again in this series as he's proving to being a really crucial player for us. Third goal in La Liga this season. Come on, boys. We've taken the lead away at Sevilla. For some reason, away games, we're getting the job done. Ocampos. Ooh, that was a good challenge from Araujo. And now, spaces are opening up and we can take advantage of it. Here goes Memphis Depay. I like this movement from him. I see Ansu Fati in a good spot, but... Ah. That was unselfish from Depay. Maybe he could have run through on goal himself. But we still have a chance here. Alba looking for Usman Dembele. No, it's Ansu Fati. Shot gets blocked. By the way, Ricky Puig just had a monster class in this game. Just, I know he lost the ball there. But it's just been so dominant from him in this game. Which is awesome to see. As Ansu finds Alba. I see Dembele in open space. If I can find him, I can. Uh, he had to take a touch there. We still have it though. Dembele. Serginio Dest. What can he do? Ricky Puig, I'm taking one. Ah, oh, didn't really work out well, but we're dominating, guys, which is just great to see. Oh, they've got a chance here. Sevilla have an opportunity. Montiel, the Argentine fullback, completely messed that one up. Frankie de Jong looking for Pedri. Alba, Ansu Fati, Pedri again. Memphis Depay, this is superb football. Pedri, back inside for Depay. Nah, it gets blocked, and it's going to be a goal kick. 
Awesome need football. It's a set piece opportunity. Ocampos to put this one in. Pau Torres needs to head it away to Stegen has helped out. Can we like get the ball away? Wow, that was chaotic. Ricky Puig could have like got injured there, but oh well. The pressure continues from Sevilla. Corner taken short. Gomez, ball played in. It's a good one. Araujo with a key header to get it away. That was honestly a bit stressful, I'm not going to lie. But on the other end of the pitch, Ansu Fati is running at, of course, the Sevilla defence. He's broken through. Ansu has to score. Oh, what a finish from Ansu Fati. As clinical as it gets, a counter-attack from Barcelona. We make it count as well. They literally could have scored off that set piece. Araujo won the header and we drove it forward. And of course, Ansu Fati is on the end of it. Our top scorer for the season continues to keep that record. Lovely finish as well. Just cool, calm, calculated finish. And Barcelona are leading 2-0 away at the Ramon Sanchez Pichuan. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect to get a win here. A big win like this as well. But looks like we are going to get it. And there you have it, guys. Full time as Barcelona make it 2-0 against Sevilla. Big result for us. Especially considering these are tricky times where we're just conceding goals for fun. But such a relief that Pau Torres is signing already feels like a success. We put in Coutinho. We put in the 50 million. But yeah, ultimately it's worked out well for us, guys. Because... Clean sheet. We've kept a clean sheet. First of the season. And to do it away against Sevilla is commendable. Also, we kept their XG to under 1. Which is great. That, that's insane. And ours was 1.3. It was a tight game, but we came out on top. So, we end off this episode 8th in La Liga with a negative goal difference. That needs to change. Next episode onwards, we got to push further up the league table, boys. We absolutely got to do. We can't afford to drop more points as well for a while. Because Real Madrid would have a perfect record. And Atletico aren't far off either. And with Barca, you're expected to win La Liga every freaking season. So we need to bounce back from the two L's we've taken at the camp now. And try and get our first home win of the season as well. Apart from all that, guess what? Champions League begins in the next episode. This is our group. Bayern, Benfica, Kiev. In real life, Barca got hammered by Bayern and Benfica. So... I don't know what to expect. We're playing against Bayern away from home for the first leg. Okay, Allianz Arena. This is not going to be fun, but I want to test and just see how good or bad our team is against the big teams. Player of the episode for me, it's between Depay who scored the opener and Pau Torres who was just a monster at the back. Lovely stuff to get a clean sheet on your debut and he made a fair few significant blocks and tackles. So for me, I feel it's got to be him. Depay has a good shout as well, scored the opener, but I feel like that there will be episodes where he does a lot more and he deserves it way more. But I think defending wise, Pau Torres probably edges it. So we will, we'll probably give it to him. We'll see in the next step though. For this one though, this is where we're wrapping things up a big episode for the series boys last minute signing of Pau Torres and we had to just pull off a miracle to get him signed and we did that exactly so amazing to pull that off mixed episode in La Liga but we'll take it we have to just keep improving next episode though it's Bayern Munich oh my god is that gonna be epic but yeah for now this is where we're wrapping things up for today's episode of the Barca career mode if you're enjoying this series you do know what to do drop a like in the video subscribe if you're around here and well I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.